I was down in the Bahamas with a camera looking for unusual angles, backgrounds, and subjects. Some were a little shy, but my luck had been good. Even so, I never expected to come across four beautifully outlined mermaids on the surface above me, much less to find them posing perfectly, as if especially for me. It looked exceptionally good from my underwater angle, so I got busy with my camera. Then I moved toward the surface to see what it was all about. Suddenly, my mermaids were swimming away from me, as if they'd seen a shark. It was a very strange change. What I hadn't realized was that they had seen a shark, me. And I was about to become tangled up in a brand new form of galloping grief. Four well-shaped charges of exploding dynamite. Suddenly, I was being attacked by four female furies. They swarmed all over me. One was tugging at my camera, another was pulling on my face mask, another had my mouthpiece. I didn't know what had hit me, or why. I couldn't very well fight back and remain a gentleman, or uh, even get a grip on the situation. And there was no way to ask questions, or even surrender. So I did the only honorable thing that any man could do under these circumstances. I ran like a coward. But now I had to find out what this was all about. My curiosity got the better of my caution. I swam back toward their boat. I've had a lot of dirty tricks pulled on me in my life. But this one really takes the cake. Well, it's got to come up sometime. We can just follow his bubbles, maybe. There are some bubbles right there. Oh, there you are, you thief. I suppose you've come up because you want to see if I will pay more for your photographs than the crook who's paying you. Well, I will. How much? Slow down, huh? Let me catch up with you. Explain it, slowly. People like you always have their price. How much? I don't seem to be able to get through to you. I don't understand what you're talking about. Well, maybe your girls will be able to explain it to me, huh? Why'd you try to drown me down there? Just because I took a couple of pictures of you. Perhaps it's possible that we've made a mistake. If we have, we owe you an apology. These girls are professional models. I design swimsuits. Our company makes them. Mr. Boothby here is photographing them for me. If our competitors can steal our styles before we can put them on the market, they can drive a $2 million corporation right out of business. Oh, that's it, huh? That's why you girls uh, got a little rough on me down there, huh? Well, I guess the simplest way out of this is to uh, give you this film. You can get it developed and uh, keep the shots that I took of the girls. If you don't mind, though, I would like the uh, rest of the roll back. Fair enough? Fair enough. Well! Mr. Nelson. Nice to see you again. Come on in, girls. Hi. Oh, this is a real Hello. pleasure. Hi. I brought your pictures back, just as I promised. Oh, that's very nice of you. Thanks a lot. Uh, sit down, huh? I want to take a look at these. 
Hi, look. Oh, the ones of my girls are just enchanting. I never realized that underwater anything could be that beautiful. Well, those were my sentiments, exactly. That's why I took the pictures of them. <laughs> Well, your pictures have given me an entirely new concept. I want to switch our entire advertising campaign, pivot it around underwater photographs. That's a good idea. It's very unusual. And I want you to take them for me. Uh, slow down. You're going a little too fast for me again. Our swimsuits have never looked better. Well, what about the photography you already have? Oh, I'll have other assignments for Mr. Boothby. But on this one, I need you. Oh, that's very nice way I'd like to, but uh, well, I've got other plans. I, I don't see oh, how I... Please, Mr. please say yes. You, uh, you'll be the models, huh? Underwater models. Sure. You're going underwater? And I'll need you to, you know, teach them how to use those tanks and things you wear. Well, I, uh, I could change my plans. When do we start? We started immediately, and by the second day, I had them underwater. Technically, this came under the heading of work, but uh, you could hardly call it slave labor. Inez had to leave, Wanda was still right there, waiting for a little more instruction. She was a very eager beaver. So I taught her how to share air in an emergency, what we call buddy breathing. And what a buddy. <laughs> I had to admit that Wanda, a little more than Inez, had a way of, uh, well, Wanda had a way. so you know who you really belong to. You don't think I want to kiss anyone else, do you? Well, you better not. You really think you've softened him up? Believe me. Good, because I've got to do something soon. Richard Realis is getting mighty anxious about those pictures, and he's not a man to keep waiting. He used to be a racketeer before he went in the garment business. I think he still is. Honey, do you think it's worth it? Well, whether it is or not, I'm committed for $10,000. He's already paid me five. Well, you're a skin diver. I don't see why you just couldn't tell Edie that you could go down and take the underwater pictures, too. I did, but she wanted Mike Nelson. I just couldn't change her mind. Oh. Well, whatever you decide to do, darling, be careful. I will. With your help, it shouldn't be too difficult. Next day, I started with Wanda and Inez on our first series of underwater photographs. Wanda didn't quite seem to understand my signals. She kept doing the wrong thing. I was too busy to suspect that she might be doing the wrong thing deliberately to uh, distract me.
In the distance, a swimmer was disappearing fast. He had my camera and its priceless films. I went after him with everything that I had. Despite his long lead, I began to close in on him. He realized that I was overtaking him and released the camera. By the time I had picked my camera up again and checked it, he had reached his boat and was taking off. He had gotten safely away, but he had put me on notice. Somebody was willing to play rough to get those pictures. Somebody who probably was ready to play much rougher, if he had to. I was in the Bahamas acting as an underwater photographer for a famous designer of bathing suits, Edith Judd. Style pirates were trying to spy out her designs and beat her to the market. An unsuccessful attempt had been made the day before to steal my films, but now everything seemed to have returned to normal. The girls were very cooperative and the photography again was coming along exceptionally well. One fact kept bothering me. Only two other people, beside Edith and myself, had known where we would be working the day before, Wanda and Inez. It seemed hard to believe that either one of them would sell us out. But now I was almost certain that one of them had. There was a streak of jealousy in Inez. She didn't conceal it too well. She was the one that I suspected, but I tried not to give her any indication of it or any tip-off. Hi! Oh, is something wrong? You tell me, Mr. Nelson. Here's your mail. The hotel sent it down with mine. I'd like an explanation of that little package. It was returned because you didn't put enough stamps on it. Well, I'm waiting for your explanation. Of what? Of that name and address. Of why a package of films should be going from you to Mr. Richard Relis, my esteemed competitor. I don't know Mr. Richard Relis. I didn't send this. Oh, oh, don't try to cover up, Mr. Nielsen. They're obviously pictures you've been taking from me. Well, it is your name and return address right there in the corner. It's my name, but that's not my printing. I didn't put that. You're making a big mistake. Oh, no. I made my mistake when I dropped Alex Boothby, a man who's been working with me for years. And as of tomorrow, Alex is taking over again. And as of right now, Mr. Nelson, your services are terminated. Come on in. Door's open. Mike? Oh, hello, Inez. Mike, I... Well, I... I just wanted you to know that I think Edith is being very impulsive and very foolish. Thank you, I agree. I'm sure you didn't do any of those things she said you did. That's right, I didn't. Well, I... I just wanted you to know that. Thanks. 
Mai sapere che mente a me. I wish you weren't leaving. Oh, I'm glad to know that I'll be missed. Oh, you will be. But it's more than that. I wasn't afraid while you were here. I am now that you're going. What do you mean? What will you be afraid of? Oh, you mean on the water? Huh? <laughs> you're gonna be all right. You're good on the water. Oh, I should have been wrong about you. What do you mean, Mike? Ah, that's not important now. What are you guys going to do tomorrow, huh? You following my schedule? No. No more underwater. They've picked out a new place entirely. Some place Alex has picked out. Hmm. Well, I think I'll change my mind. I'll be around for a while. Hello, dear. Hello. Been to see Mike Nelson? Yes. Nothing personal, I hope. That's really my business, isn't it? I hope it was yours, not mine. And if it wasn't, you could be a very unhappy girl. I was relaxing at the hotel with a new friend that I had made when I was paged for a phone call. I expected it to be Inez. But it was Edith. She was frantic. There was trouble. She wanted my help quickly. Boothby had selected a place called Boval Rock and the caves within it as a photographic background. The moment I heard Boval Rock, I knew what the trouble must be. This was the wrong time of year for Boval Rock. At low tide, the rock looked okay to anyone who didn't know it. But at high tide, it became a raging death trap. At least twice a year, unwary people were marooned out on the rock. And several had been swept to their deaths by the high waves and raging tides. When I hit the beach, I needed only one look to tell me that my fears were well founded. For Boothby to send anybody out onto Boval Rock to pose was nothing but a cleverly concealed form of murder. Edith was on the beach in a state of tears and hysteria. Boothby and Wanda seemed frightened. And there, far out on the rock, cut off by the tide and the surf, was one lonely figure, Inez. I'd gotten to know Boval Rock very well when I was searching for an old Spanish treasure ship. I had never tried to reach it in conditions like this. But many times you can move underwater when it would be impossible to survive up above. There was a hollow in Boval Rock. If I could ride the tides into that hollow, I might be able to reach Inez. Now the currents were like octopus arms, twisting, pulling, tearing, tangling. I had to cling to whatever handhold I could find on the bottom to keep from being sucked to the raging surface. I was behind the main rocks, into the hollow, and quieter waters. But worse was to come. Stop it! 
want to get back to shore, don't you? Huh? Don't you? Yes, yes. Then get a hold of yourself. Get a hold of yourself. Now listen. Listen to me. We're going to have to share the same tank. You understand? There's a big current running down there. We may get separated. Oh, Do you think I can make it? I know you can. Here, turn around. Here. Don't forget. Hold on to me real tight, huh? I'm depending on this for my air, too, huh? Come on now. Getting in myself had been tough enough. Getting back with her would take everything that either of us had. our way along, sharing the air, hanging on to each other for dear life, until we were well away from the rock. Then we fought our way along the bottom. Why was he trying to kill you? Huh? I don't know. I, I guess he was afraid I'd tell what I knew about him. About what? That he was working for somebody else? For realists? Well, why didn't you tell me this before? I wasn't sure at first, and then... I don't know. I, I guess I was scared. Girl, I've been. Oh, and my, can you ever forgive me? If I never forgive me. Oh, my. I got some unfinished business over here. I'll see you later. I'm Lloyd Bridges. You know, three-fifths of the world is covered by the sea. And how little most of us know about that underwater world. Go below with us again next week, huh? For another thrilling adventure in Sea Hunt.